In the government's latest response... You must stay at home. Master of the house, doling out the charm. It's very important that everyone... Know that you are, you are not alone. Do you want to make sweet, awesome timelines like this? I do. In this video, let's find out how we do it. G'day data nerds. So in this video, we're going to look at producing a timeline, which is a cool pictorial representation of when events happened in relation to each other chronologically, um, and to scale. Uh, we're going to have a look at producing a timeline in Google Sheets. Now, Google Sheets wouldn't be my first go-to, that would be Excel, but Excel's probably my first go-to on most things, and that's because it has it's just a better at it. It's a better system. But Google Sheets um, is more collaborative, and that may be what your system uses anyway. You might not have a choice. So if you make this in either a classroom or an organization, um, if you need to collaborate, this is a nice, easy way to do it. And timelines are really useful for organizations, uh, for organizing uh, workflow and how we, you know, when things are due. So I actually have two tables. I've got a nice and simple one here in the green um, and we're looking at the space race because I dig the crap out of rockets. Um, so we're going to look at the space race. So in the very first one you'll see that I've got 1957, 58 and each of these is a year that something happened in the space race. Um, but you'll notice I've got 1960 and 1960 for the scale of things we're looking at was a pretty bare year so it was 63, 64 and 1967. But we still need to include these years because that gives us our scale. Without those, um, it'll stop being to scale. So this column here has every time unit that we want. Now in our more detailed table, you'll see that we have events having in October 1957 and November 1957. This means, so if we can split those two pieces up by a month, it means we need to split our dates up by months and that means we need to keep every single month in there and not just the ones we need because again we want to keep it to scale now, that seems like a hassle um, but using a spreadsheet it's actually not too hard so if we go October 1957 if we get ahead of ourselves and just start dragging it down like that you'll see that every single year is October 1957 but if we get October 1957 and beneath that we write November 1957 it will very quickly pick up the pattern and then we can drag that all the way down to July 1969 or whatever date you've got now it's okay that you've got big chunks of empty space because this here is not the point this is just our background information and in fact we would keep this on a separate um, sheet that no one would see if we were using this graph for something else. So here we go, we have all of our information. Now let's have a look at how do we turn this into a timeline. First off we select, oh, okay sorry, so let's have a look at how our tables are built first. We have the date or year, so that's the time. We have the events that we're looking at in both and then we have this one here in height and what we're doing essentially is we're hacking a column graph or a column chart to make a nice and easy um, timeline and with that that means we need a numerical value um, and in this case we have positive values and negative values and you see they alternate and the reason they're alternating is so that we can put all of these values um, so that they're not overlapping when they are data and you'll see when they're data points on our chart and you'll see this now so let's have a quick look we'll do the um, simple one first. So we highlight all of our data. Um, we've got year, event and height all highlighted. So we go to insert, chart, and there we go. And this looks nothing like a timeline. What have you done, Pete? You've ruined our time. No, just jokes. We're good. First thing we want to do is we want to add an x-axis. Our x-axis we're going to use will be year because that's where we want our time. To go. So we do this, put it down there, 1957 all the way through, and it's starting to at least now have a scale. So that means our series that we want on there is we actually want the height and the events, not the year. 
So, series, we'll get rid of this. We don't need this one. Remove that. Bye-bye, pal. Uh, we don't need that level. Oh, it's starting to look a bit more interesting. So now we're starting to see something that we can see that there's gaps between in the right spot. All is working out. So we've got height there. We now want to add a label, and that is going to be our event column. Ah, look at that. So we can start to see our events are starting to appear. Now, there's a slight hassle there in that they're overlapping, but we'll make it bigger and that'll sort that out. We'll show you that next. Um, first, so that's in setup, and we're kind of done in setup now. Now we move over to customize. So the very first thing, uh, we want to leave our chart title, our chart style alone. We want to go down to chart and access titles, and we want to give it a title, space race timeline, because we need our data to be, you know, we need it to be representative. Um, and we can do all sorts of stuff. We can have it in the middle if we want. Um, we can change the color. I like green. Let's go dark green. And all depending on what we want to do, we can change all that sort of information. Now, we want to go to um, series. And we want to make sure that this is all where we want it to be. Uh, these are the colors we want it. Um, and so on. But we can change it. We can go back to our dark green if we want. And now it all starts to match. Um, I like that. Then we can go down. Make sure our data labels are ticked. That's really important. Now let's have a look at vertical axis. So one of the extra bits of information, extraneous bits of information we don't need, is this here. See these dates? Oh, sorry, the height numbers? We don't need those. Now, we're not going to get rid of them because Google Sheets actually makes it really hard to get rid of them. But what we can do is we can change the color. Now, if we change the color to being the same color as the background, that just makes them disappear, and that's nice and easy. Now, we can see we've got nice and scale there. That's good. Uh, we've got a title. We've got all of our information there. A little bit overlapping. Now, there are ways we could change that. All right, so we're pretty happy with that. It looks got a little bit of overlapping, but I'll show you how to sort that out. The way to sort that out is to make it bigger. So if we go here, um, we can stretch the chart out like this. It's easy done. We see we start the information starts to get a bit clearer. But I like to do this always. Move it to its own sheet. Now, you'll see that the lines become thick, and the reason they become thick is because um, the space is thick, that's all. And that's something that's actually easier to sort out on um, Excel. We get a little less flexibility here, but again, collaboration is the payoff. Um, and we can copy the chart, publish the chart as a web page, so we can do all sorts of stuff here. Um, and this is our finished product using that one. Now, if we go back to sheet one, we can do it. Now, if we go back to sheet one, we can actually do it with our second set of data. And this is the more complex one. It'll produce a different type of graph. It'll look, uh, no, it'll produce exactly the same type of graph, but it'll look a little different. So if we go here to um, insert, chart again, same sort of deal, right? So we go, um, make sure we've got our column chart. We want to add an x-axis, which is going to be the date. Um, we then want to remove this series, and we want to keep the series height, but we want to add a label, and that label is going to be the event. Oh, come back to edit. And we want to remove the x-axis labels, because they're not helpful for us. And we can see here we've got a bit more gap. Now, I'll show you the other aspect of the way to move these things around. So yes, as we make this thing larger, it'll make more sense. But I just say right here, I've kept all of the American stuff on, well, actually, no, here we go. USSR um, satellite lunar orbits the, the sun, which is weird that they call it lunar. Um, and the USA, John Glenn, first American to orbit Earth. They overlap a bit, so let's have a look on how to fix that. So if we look here, that'll be 
around 1958 USSR. Um, we go up here. How about we change this to a minus one instead? We change that, and what we'll find is that if we go back down, I'm not sure why it's built down there, that it's moved. So let's actually move this back up. So that's one way to sort out our problem. Um, then we go here, edit the chart. Again, we want to give it a title, so we go into customize. Um, give it a title. Um, what else can we do? We can go to the vertical axis, text color, the same, just get rid of it there. Um, grid lines and ticks. These here, these lines here are annoying. So if we make them the same color as the background, they will disappear. And again, we make this its own sheet. And we can see how we have this beautiful, nice timeline. Thanks for watching. I hope that made sense. And I hope you can make your own timelines now using Google Sheets. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. And we'll catch you next time. Bye now.